Welcome everyone. Welcome to this latest episode and a series I'm putting out on living the astrology. And in this episode, we are going to talk about what it was like living through a North node transit in the 12th house while the South node was in the sixth house. And also, you know, this is during a time when the North nodes went from Taurus to Aries. South node went from Scorpio to Libra. <laughs> so in this video, I will be sharing a lot of what it was like to live through that astrology uh, with this contrast with these two houses, uh, contrasting uh, your very private hidden realm uh, issues having to do with, you know, solitude. And yes, even got into some isolation there. Healing work, very spiritual house. At a time when the energy is pushing me to focus on healing issues, maybe having to do with self-sabotage, hidden enemies, it gets very intense on those matters. And as much as I want to be making forward movement on sixth house matters, things having to do with my day-to-day -day life, maybe having a job or a vocation or an occupation, uh, the, with the south note there in that house, it's just getting pushed out. So um, I am going to talk about a lot of healing in this video, a lot of physical and spiritual and emotional healing in this video. And of course, I'm going to talk about the axes br brought up with this transit where coming into it, a lot of focus on my values, other people's values and resources. And then as I come out of it, which I'm now out of it as I'm filming it right now, but as I come out of it, the focus shifts to my relationships, self versus others. Couple disclaimers before I get started that I have to put out for everybody who's maybe not familiar with this playlist because it's titled Living the Astrology and I'm only talking about transits I've lived through and I just started it this year. I'm not going to have an entire playlist of all the houses, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be doing an entire series on that. Now, fortunately, these nodes shift every year and a half. So, you know, give me a while. Give me about 12 years. Maybe I'll have all the houses by then. Also, again, because it's me putting something out there that is not textbook astrology, it requires a lot of personal sharing and vulnerability and authenticity that is incredibly rare these days, um, you know, w watch at your own discretion because some people don't, they don't want to know me at that level. And, and that's taking a level of bravery for me, you know, um, because on one hand, I want to tell you enough to really help inform you and equip you, especially if you're coming into this transit so that you know what it is that you need to prepare yourself for. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to say too much that would not be respectful of people in my private life. So I'm kind of weighing it out, but I think most of you understand. It's a precarious situation, but like I said, I was spirit led to put this out here in this way to help people. Cause we have enough textbook explanation. Like if you, you know, you want to know about a different transit that I'm not covering. There's like a whole plethora of people that you could tap into for that. Another disclaimer that I have to put out there is, you know, I, I my life experience is not yours. I'm not saying that my experience or the way that I synthesize this experience is exactly the way you will. I have a totally different energetic signature. I have different karma in this life, different lessons. And so some of you may or may not take it as hard as I did. Okay. Um, I will say particularly with me being Aquarius Sun, Mercury Midheaven, and having a Pisces Stellium in the 10th and 11th houses pisces also being very 12th house which a house it's a house we're covering here i definitely felt very strongly affected by these houses and these signs being activated and so again you know if you're going through this transit but you don't have relevant pisces or transpersonal house placements like 9th 10th 11th 12th as i do then you might not feel the weight of it the way that I do. And again, with my Pisces Stellium, I could like cry a river about it. And some of y'all are maybe like, oh, I'll walk that off. Like, that's not that big of a deal. And also some of you, 
may be like, mm, why, why was that such a, why did that surprise you or let you down? Well, also a reminder that I was going through Neptune in my 11th house during this time. So my blind spot was in things that I had idealized, wished, hoped for. And so, yeah, some of you, again, you have an energetic signature or you're going through transits at this time where it's not going to hit you so hard. So on one hand, I'm like, you know, uh, understand me as I'm talking, um, and know that my experience may not be exactly like yours. Okay, so a few of the basics. The North Nodes shift roughly every year and a half. We just got out of a year and a half of the nodes in Taurus and Scorpio, which is where this transit started for me when it went into my 12th house, okay? And humanity collectively, we were all looking at values, our own values, versus other people's values and we're looking also at income issues personal income resources versus other people's income resources so definitely there's an emphasis on this as it goes into my 12th house 12th house has a lot to do with healing these issues of self-sabotage hidden enemies and so of course you put these signs and this house together at the beginning of this transit uh, I am most definitely recognizing that I need to reconfigure who I'm sharing resources with because I realize I have been doing so with people I don't share values with. And as the transit progresses over the year and a half uh, from it actually started uh, February 11th, 2022, it just ended March 8th of 2024, which was last week, yeah. And when it ended, it had the nodes had shifted then into Aries and Libra, which is a lot about these significant others in my life and how it contrasts with me on an individual level. So I'm going to go through, uh, you know, each significant time frame uh, during these years of 2022, 2023, 2024, and how it kind of morphed given these these changes in different signs but the whole time remaining in the 12th house where i'm having to do a lot of healing alone a lot of solitude and a lot of psychological spiritual growth at this time concerning my values and how it compares to that of others and it was very painful but um Hopefully you stick with me to the end. We'll talk about how, uh, the good that came from it. So if you've been following the series thus far, I've already explained to you the reasons why <laughs> uh, I came into this transit already feeling quite alone and isolated. Little did I know it was about to get worse. Um, in previous episodes that I put out, uh, I talked about Black Moon Lilith in my fourth house and how my family was really pissed off at me. Um, there, I, I, uh, that video, honestly, I didn't even tell y'all the depth and magnitude of the anger that came out within my family. Um, you know, I've, I've been through a divorce, single parent at eight years, three kids. I'm totally drained, financially tapped out. Um, and honestly, this kind of bullshit's been going on all my life. So, you know, cause I've got in my natal chart, I've got malefics in my money houses with Mars in Capricorn in my eighth. So constant from probably cradle till death and literally from cradle parents fighting in, in the labor ward while I was being born. Okay. <laughs> it isn't going on. It's like, here we go again, people fighting over shared resources. And this is while, you know, the nodes are releasing Scorpio shared resources, um, matters of power dynamics and whatnot. And this karma having to do with generational wealth in my 10th house, uh, getting the squeeze on it with Saturn there. So it's just, it's a big cluster F going on. And with Black Moon Lilith going through that fourth house, um, they're angry at me because I am not providing them the stability and security with my career. And I'm asking them to be supportive in that. And they're, they're like, take care of yourself, right? We're, we're in a very hyper-independent 
uh, culture. And so everybody's like, well, why don't you just take care of yourself? And um, I am, by the way, going to talk more about that probably in a couple weeks when I get out of the Saturn in the 10th house transit. So if you want to make sure you're notified for that, um, make sure you've activated the bell for all notifications, okay, so that you're notified when I release that. Um, and that was a two and a half year transit that put a lot of constriction on my my career. So the family's pissed off at me, the career's not supporting me, the family's not supporting me. And then if you watched my last video, I explained to you this 10 year transit of Chiron moving through my 11th house, which resulted in the shedding or the disconnection from relationships that were either toxic or uh, there was some misalignment or it's just they were not showing up for me in any kind of meaningful way, given the challenges I was going through as a single mother. And so what ends up happening is that, you know, you, you, the loss of a marriage and then you're dealing with a lot of midlife crisis energy and a lot of restriction on your status, your career. Family gets pissed off at you. Friends are kind of fair weathered. You see how we get alone here? <laughs> Welcome North Node in the 12th house. Nobody is around. Okay, now listen, let me say I'm an Aquarian. And not only that, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 10th house or Aquarian. Okay, so I know a lot of people. And a lot of people know of me. But, and this is a big but, do I really have anybody that I can call up at 3 a.m. and say, hey, I'm up a creek without a paddle? No, I cannot. Uh, come to find out, I've attracted a lot of people in my life who have their own woes and are so caught up in them. They've got a laundry list of reasons as to why they cannot show up for other people. Valid or not, it is what it is. So... Coming into this transit, there's been tremendous shedding. I mean, I've even lost, I explained in the last video how in 2017, I lost my home and I had to relocate. So I've been completely uprooted. I have basically no viable support system. Although like I'm online and I've got like 24,000, well at that time, 27,000 followers on my social media, but I can't call any of these people if I'm in a bad situation. And uh, I was in a bad situation. In 2022, when this transit started, I was already feeling trapped and powerless. I had been in a house sharing situation so that I could afford uh, raising my children with little or no child support while growing my online business. The online business was doing well for a few years, but by 2022 when this transit started, I started getting hit with all kinds of increased online competition, algorithms, blacklisting because of what we all know happened in 2020. So it was like downhill from there with my business. Also, even the money that I had come in during 2020, 2021, I was trying to get moved out of that house sharing situation and I wanted to get my own place, but because of the economy and the increased housing prices, and it was just on and on and on and on and on, there was always some reason why I was getting blocked and I couldn't get moved. And, I, and no matter which way I tried to maneuver and try to, it just something, they always, some reason they kept blocking me as to why I couldn't get acceptance into, you know, my own housing, no matter what I tried for how long and who with, you know, it's, there was always some reason why they picked some other candidate. So I remained in this shared housing situation, this communal living arrangement for much longer than I intended. And I could not seem to get myself out of it. And one of the things that was motivating me also is that I just started looking at the people that were around me. It was getting super weird. Let me say like 12th house can bring up issues with mental illness, prisons, refugees, homelessness, and sweet Jesus, I mean, it already started, like I already started getting a taste of it because this place that I had moved into like in 2018, everything was like pristine, perfect on the up and up with, you know, the people that I was sharing housing with, but at about 2021, it starts digressing, I don't know, probably because of the economy or whatever, and the guy who is in charge and owns the house, he starts bringing people in who are pretty sketchy 
and I have one story I'm going to condense it way down but let me tell you like he brought some woman in with one hour notice and this woman turns out to be crazy and was coming just barging letting herself into my room without knocking which is super weird who does that and then at one point she came into my bedroom at like 3 a.m while I'm in bed and got in my face and said that there was like somebody outside trying to break into my car and I went out there and nobody was out there she was hallucinating and so I start getting freaked out like oh my god he's letting crazy people in here and so I start slowly trying to get myself out of it which was really going to take some doing because I didn't really have anybody to help me other than my kids you know like to physically move and I had to move myself and my youngest out of there and I it was like okay I'm just gonna try to go back where I came from which was Austin and I, I actually tried to stay out here but every door out here just closed like and I, again it was a situation where I like I knew different people or I knew of them or I had connections with them but nobody would, there was always something that just didn't work out. So I took it as a message from the universe and, and I really prayed about it. I really felt like I was telling me to go back, go back to Austin. Okay. And, and a door of opportunity did open up out there in Austin. We got to talk more about that. So anyway, as I'm out there trying to set up new housing in Austin, I had to kind of leave behind my youngest daughter who was like 17 at the time. Long story short, I find out this other person in the house lets a homeless man in there who has been living in the house while my youngest daughter is there alone and nobody said anything there's some strange homeless man in the house and that's when I just like go through the damn roof I just freaking lose it and we called the cops and everything we're like what is going on you know and he was like living in the basement <laughs> basement is very 12th house okay so anyway I just cut I go through the roof and now again like I realize I have to get my daughter out even quicker than I thought and so I'm scrapping all this money together and trying to get everything to line up so I can hurry up and get her out of there and then little did I know I was going into another mental illness scene and let me say I confronted the guy who owns the place and I was like astonished because he tried to like manipulate me and I was uh, he's like oh I thought you'd be compassionate I'm like what the hell we pay here my daughter could be raped you know God only knows what could happen and you want me to be compassionate like he he actually tried to make me to be the bad person for being concerned about my daughter and that we had paid it was just absolutely ridiculous I was like oh my god get me out here I was like gonna lose my damn mind that this guy was trying to play me and then he was also trying to pretend like he was a morally on higher ground that there was something virtuous about what he was doing and i actually found out and called him out on it that no you are doing this for money you don't care who you let in here you're doing this for money and you're trying to act like you're helping people but actually you helped yourself to more money because look i don't want to go all into it again see i'm getting like whoo lost in it 12th house lost lost that's where the story's going. So I get to a point because of this situation where I am so desperate for privacy, which is 12th house. So some of you might really love this transit, okay? It might turn out to not be so bad. Like, and coming into, I'm like, yes, please leave me the hell alone. I don't wanna live with these people. I just, I, I don't. I don't wanna deal with all these damn people. And I got so livid and so motivated about what was going on around me with all these other people that I was, you know in a kind of communal living situation with and I just was so freaking tired and over it that I was like you know what I don't even care how unglamorous I have to live if I have to go live out in a trailer in 10 buck three I don't give a damn I just don't want to deal with these people I want my space I want to be left alone and so lo and behold that's basically what opens up for me and I'm just so happy to have my own space I'm like you know what don't worry about it I can see past that but my uh Neptune in the 11th house sweet Jesus God help me <laughs> I can dream I can see how you know we did extreme makeover of this we can we can make this beautiful I can fix this I can heal this <laughs> okay I'm glad I can laugh at myself now so anyway it looked like this dreamy situation where you know there was a story about some man again 12th house stuff he owned this property and he was like a paraplegic and he had to be 
moved to nursing home care because he had digressed to such a level that he needed one-on-one -on -one care um, and also needed a way to pay for it. So the idea was, okay, you're going to come in, we're going to restore this property, uh, pay him rent so that he can pay for his nursing home care. And it was uh, his friend and my family member was all going to like pitch in together and restore this property, right? Well, long story short, I find out the hard way that I think what they were most interested in is collecting rent money. Uh, I, after being there for like three months, a lot of things they said they were going to do to repair and maintain and improve the property were not done. Some of those things I actually did myself. So, um, you know, that, that was not good. And then to make matters worse, I start hearing gunshots going off and they started making fun of me like I had a mental health problem. My daughter was, my youngest daughter was out there at one point and we were like, nah, that's, that was a gunshot. And I even reported it to emergency 911 and they were like, oh, Stephanie, this is Texas. People been shooting guns out in the country forever nothing going on and I just knew in my spirit I knew in my spirit something was wrong 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 and that place started feeling so creepy like I was in the damn twilight zone and every night when I would lock down for the night like I especially if I had to go put the trash out I put it out before the sun went down and I go back to the house and I turn all the outdoor lighting on and I'd lock up the door and I just felt creepy out there. And then about a month later, they find a woman's dead body has been decomposing two doors down. The guy had shot her. Or I don't know what the hell he did. Okay. He said he, she tripped and fell and bumped her head. Okay. But whatever. I, I, that was it. I had to get out at that point. I'm like, you know what? I'm out. And I don't know how, but, and that's when I put all my stuff in storage. And I did, I did a lot of it myself. I had, was running back and forth, taking stuff in my car until finally I got help. Again, we're talking 12th house. You might feel like you're in a twilight zone. You might be dealing with people who seem like they come from the twilight zone. There's some criminal element. There's something seedy about them. There's something hidden. Um, victimization, right? victimization comes up with the 12th house and I had to figure out in powerlessness and at this point I felt like I was getting trapped and I had to find a way to take my power back and so as I'm getting out of this place I'm calling family and I'm like can you know can I come stay with you can I and, and it was like people have their own lives their own issues and mine were inconvenient you know and 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 I'm, I'm like okay the only person that opened their door up was my ex, who I did not want to go stay with. He's the only person that opened his door up. So I ended up going to stay with him and that lasted one hot week. I, I'm not going to go into detail about that. Let's just say this theme of continued on. And at this point, I'm like having dreams and visions that me, okay? And at one point, I, I, I thought that he was. So I got out of there. So where do you go when you have nowhere to go? You have no family to call. They're all pissed off at you even though you've been victimized. They say, well, you know, you should take care of yourself. Maybe you, maybe you victimized yourself by your own decisions. Maybe you should stop self-sabotaging yourself. Maybe you wouldn't be in the situation had you made better decisions. Maybe, uh, like my parents' generation, you made your bed, lie in it. Where do you go when your family has that attitude towards you? Where do you go when your friends, uh, they're dealing with their own problems and uh, you've tried to reach out and ask for resources, options, and people just withdraw because they don't want to get involved. They don't, they're afraid of being exploited. 
Well, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. I'm going to leave it up to your imagination and your common sense. I didn't end up in jail, but I did end up very, very alone. Somehow, miraculously, I managed to continue working the entire time on my business, which for what I couldn't even make a living off of. And that's why my family was pissed. Side note, yeah. Now I gotta say this whole time leading up to this that my family's been pissed at me. They've just been telling me like, essentially I should abandon my work, my my spiritual work, um, that I should just go get a job. And, and I actually was trying, uh, initially it was hard because I was um, sharing a car with my youngest daughter. And it just worked out where I could let her use my car if I worked from home. So I kept just trying to like, hit my business even harder but a problem with at this point you know sound in my 10th house which I'll talk more about later it's just like it, you, you couldn't even make it move it's like you know dropping resources into a money pit you know like I I'm hardly getting anything like right and most of the stuff that I put on my YouTube like this that you're seeing here I'll just put it out for free I will never make probably any money off of it off of YouTube um and hardly any people will get in see it all right so they were like, yeah, you just need to go get a job because you can't even pay your bills anymore off of this. I know it used to, but it doesn't anymore. So just go get a job. Well, the problem is, is when your north node is in the 12th house, your south node is in the sixth house. Very important because I personally feel that that north node is telling you where your focus needs to be, right? That's like where your mission and direction should be at that time in your life. And that is indicative of a sabbatical. You know, but think about it. And this is something that I realized during this transit is that culturally we have no system in place for people going on a sabbatical. Like there's, you're just supposed to keep working, working, working. If anything, maybe you'll get some, you know, a vacation or two uh, a year. A lot of people, I know, I know myself worked for many years without vacations. Vacations, that's for rich people, right? Um, but yeah, if you're lucky, maybe you'll get a month of vacation out of a year. And yeah, this is a one and a half year transit where spirit is really stepping in and saying, uh, you need to take a time out. And, you know, South Node in the sixth house is a point of release and what you're having to let go of. And in this case, sixth house, you're having to let go of and release your, your vocational work, um, a job, op occupation. So, you know, all these people who are yelling at me, get a job, get a job. Like I even had one family member yell it at me, like in anger and frustration, get a job. And I'm like, oh my God, how, how do you even get people to understand? Like any of you who are listening to this and you know, astrology, how do you get a job when your South node is in the sixth house, Saturn is in your 10th. And you have malefics in your money houses in your natal chart, right? You're in the middle of a south node in the sixth house transit and a 10th house Saturn transit. These are your career and vocational houses in the shitter effectively. And your money houses are in the shitter on top of that, but that's in your natal chart. You've been doing that for life. Like, again, I'm going to talk more about the 10th house stuff in another video, but I don't like I and I know from knowing the astrology like I can see it there and I can be compassionate with myself like and I and trust me because if I didn't know the astrology I would think I was cursed but when they're yelling at me like that I know that they don't understand and trust me I did my due diligence I put probably in the last year of this transit I put well over a thousand resumes applications out and then when it did not work out and numerous interviews by the way but when it didn't work out rather than say nobody likes me which would have been easy because i'm coming up in a chiron return <laughs> in aries hey um rather than say nobody likes me i looked at the astrology and i said you know you're not supposed to be working right now you you have to work on your healing and, you know, and that's really tough because in this matrix, they want you to stay on that hamster wheel. Keep making that money. Keep paying those bills. 
debt slave, right? It's no time for you to do spiritual healing. I mean, if you're lucky, if you're, you know, you got enough money, you can take a vacation two to four weeks out of the year, but you ain't taking a year and a half off to do your spiritual work, right? So what do I do in this reality and surrounded by a culture and family, friends that are like, get a job and the astrology is just not supporting it. Astrology spirit is like overriding saying, no, we don't really want you working right now. We want you to take a time out and heal and uh, you don't really need to be around people. So what I did is I, I really tried to, um, and this is what I would advise, like if, if I had a client in this situation, you, you got to look at where your limitations are, right? Like the, what I just talked to you about where Saturn was and where the South Node was, right? Like respect that, okay? Those are your boundaries. Those are your guardrails. Like the sky is not the limit for anybody. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. It's not a Disney <laughs> movie here, okay? You have limitations. Respect them. Acknowledge them. Work within them. Let them strengthen you, if anything. But those are my limitations, okay? Like my career vocational house is jacked. So I know I'm not gonna find, I'm not gonna get my needs met in those houses. I can try and when it fails, I'll be compassionate myself, with myself and I'll be like, okay, it's, it's, it's a timing thing, Stephanie, it's okay. But then when I look at, okay, well, where could I get a lucky break? Well, Jupiter was in my 12th house at that time. And so it was like, okay, Charities, sliding scale services, people who work with providing services and resources to those who are in disadvantaged communities. Uh, I try to do remote working, you know, uh, I try and working from home, which I continue to do with my business. And I got a little bit of traction on that. Again, not enough to pay my bills, but I made some you know, progress in that respect. And so, um, you know, that's what I would encourage if I was dealing with a client in that situation is to say, try to get work working remote or working in solitude and tap charitable resources. But most importantly, do the healing work because pretty soon that ship is going to sail. We have to seize the moment while we have it, as inconvenient of timing as it may be, right? Like I had in my mind what I wanted to do with the last year and a half. And unfortunately, the energies said, no, we need to take a time out. You want to keep going, going, going. And the world is telling you to keep going, going, going. Like you're some damn energizer bunny, but you need to purge. You need to heal. You need to decompress from what has happened during the previous cycles. So going into this transit, I thought that I was just going to be living by myself in a little remote area and a little tiny, almost like a tiny house that I was going to restore. This is my idealistic thinking with Neptune in my 11th house. Oh, it's just going to be quiet. I'm going to do my business from home and I'm going to, you know, do my spiritual work and I'll work on this house and restore this property and I'll work on my relationships with my kids. And it was so, and it turned out to be a damn nightmare. It was not anything like that. It was like Twilight Zone horror film kind of <clears throat> ish, right? And I am really leaving a lot of information out. So with Jupiter in the 12th house giving me some relief, I was able to tap into some resources. Unfortunately, that either put me in more isolation or of which to some degree was fine with actually the isolation I at some point I prefer in other situations I was in communal living situations where unfortunately I became aware of how much I need my space because when I was dealing with so many people I couldn't hardly hear myself think okay and I, I didn't have privacy I had to go to like a, a park or something just to kind of grieve alone about my situation and uh, finally I ended up getting into a housing situation where I was afforded the solitude that I need and I was able to have the privacy and the uninterrupted time to heal and I was also able to tap into a resource where I could get some free counseling just so I have somebody somebody to talk to because um, I, I find in a lot of my friendships I end up taking on the listener role or 
if I start talking to people about my issues, they feel that they're being dragged down or brought down. Or like if I try to talk to my kids, they feel like I'm parentifying them. So I just, again, very isolating. Like who do I talk to? Um, some people, they just, they just have no clue what I've gone through. So I don't even bother. Like, right. If you've never been a single mom and you don't understand what that's like and how people exploit the weak in this society and how unjust that is right to single moms how men use single moms men don't invest in single moms men discard a lot of single moms yes there are exceptions like if you don't understand that struggle like why am i going to talk to you about it you know especially if you just are in your own bubble and you want to talk about your own life you know which is unfortunately i tell you like a lot of people in my offline world that's i don't know it's they they like me because I commiserate with them, but then they can't seem to, I feel, commiserate with me. So it was probably for the best that I was alone because I just don't know. Like, I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody. Like, I, I felt like I had to suffer alone because there's nothing they were going to do. Either they couldn't or they flat wouldn't help me and get involved. And I knew this from previous transits that I've already gone into, right? So fortunately, I was able to get into some therapy where I at least have somebody that I can talk to. And that really, that helped me as kind of a release valve to just get things off my chest and to vent. Another thing that I did during that time is, <laughs> my gosh, 12 House is a lot about places of escape, places of recreation. And knowing this, you know, as a student of astrology going through this transit i was like okay i need to get out in nature more and i went on so many nature trails during this transit i started out in galveston when this whole thing really really went down where i felt so completely lost i felt like my life had been discarded like i felt the nothingness the selfless I don't have a sense of self, right? I felt this during this time. And when that really sunk in for me, I was in the Galveston area. And at one point I just went, laid a blanket down on the beach. I walked the beach a lot and I walked the piers, but at one point I just, as an act of healing, I just laid a blanket down on the beach and I just fell asleep there for about two hours. <laughs> And this was part of me healing in nature. I went to so many parks I, I, and lakes and I went to the ocean. I actually traveled a lot. Uh, so yeah, there's a positive spin to this lost feeling is that I just, I actually felt like I could get lost. I went to parks that I've been to maybe 20, 30 years ago in Austin and for the first time, I felt like I could just wander and get lost there and it would be okay. Like I suddenly had the time and nobody was expecting me to be back or to answer to them or to do anything. Um, so to some degree, that felt good. Um, recently, I put out a video about laying in the riverbeds in Austin and the healing power of water. I put out a video about that. So I was doing, and then I, lay, I did some forest bathing as well. So I went to different parks and I really immersed myself in the nature trails and all of that to reset my energy. Physical healing during this time though was a challenge. And again, because we're talking about South Node in the sixth house, we are looking at a point of release and letting go and, and then surrender. Um, something being purged, you know, and so there was a part of me who wanted that wanted to do more physical healing, but because I was so strapped for resources and a lot of what's required for physical healing here costs money, I, I was very challenged with this. Like it took me a long time to get the chiropractic care I needed and I'm still dealing with I, to this day, I've got lower back pain from that, and I, I don't know why. Um, at first, it was like I was being told that I couldn't get in, that I didn't, I didn't get my adjustments fast enough back to back. Like I let too much time lapse between visits, and then when I finally went in and got all the the visits I needed back to back, like I was supposed to, 
and the pain was still there, they said, oh, it's because, you know, your muscles formed uh, muscle memory from not getting proper care fast enough. I don't really know. Uh, I'm still trying to work through that, but physical healing was a challenge with that transit. I was able to do a lot of spiritual, psychological, relational growth, but physical, it was like pulling teeth to get the proper supplements, get the proper appointments. Oh, I, and I tried, but it was always something. So yeah, the last year of this transit, or definitely the last six months, I started having ramped up dream activity uh, because I was coming out of it and the North Node was moving into my 11th house, which is where it now is as I'm filming. Um, 11th house is very Aquarian, very about humanity, friend groups, um, but 12th house is a lot about that dream activity, the subconscious. And so I was having a lot of dreams of a lot, a lot of people. I mean, even last night I was having it. But it is Pisces season. I do have a Pisces psyllium, even with the North Node now in the 11th house. Anyway, it's just been this transition of 11th to 12th houses has brought about a lot, a lot of dream activity where I wake up feeling like I just got out of a subway station. And again, you may not have that because, you know, if you don't have a Pisces stellium and Aquarius, you know, you may not be as tapped or tuned into the collective as someone with my energetic signature is, okay? Um, like if you're more of a personal sign, I don't know that you're going to be feeling it so much. However, uh, to me, I, I personally feel it's like Spirit's way of preparing me for and I don't, I really don't know where it's going again. Neptune's still in my 11th house. So I'm like, where's this going? Why do I keep dreaming about all these people? Because I, I know I'm about to deal with a lot, a lot of people. And I don't know why. And it may just be online. I have no clue yet. But it's a lot of people. And I don't know them. It's like walking through a New York City subway station. And then I wake up. And I don't know. It's because when I'm dreaming, I'm just kind of like pulling in all this collective energy. But... It's wild. So what I'm going to advise is that if you are going through this transit, at times you may really want to be left alone and rightfully so. There's a time and a place for that. Like I've had people like get on to me because I'm isolating or whatever. And yeah, you do have to kind of weigh that out because at some point you do need to be alone. And other times, yeah, maybe you do need to talk to somebody. Uh, but talk to somebody that's, you know not going to make you feel bad for venting or whatever it is that you need to get off your chest. Um, do the healing work, do shadow work, you know, uh, look at your Chiron placements, your Black Moon Lilith placements. How are you self-sabotaging yourself? Where are your hidden enemies? What wound do you need to heal within yourself so that you can bring healing to others? And as much as society wants to try to get you to just go back in line and do what they think you need to be doing, you know, recognize this is a time in your life divinely appointed for a sabbatical, whether society respects that or not, understands that or not. At some level, you need to understand and acknowledge that this is a divinely appointed time in your life for healing and to do that work. Because if you don't seize that moment, if you, let's say, try to make yourself focus on your career or your job you try to escape and lose yourself in that rather than do the healing work then obviously when the north node gets into one of these career houses where you then are supposed to be focused you're going to be out of step because you didn't do the proper purging and healing that you were supposed to do to ready you so that you make the most out of when the North Node does go into a career vocation house. Like everything in its proper place and order. Otherwise, things are out of step and disjointed and out of alignment. Like try not to fight the energy. Try to work with it. Right? By like going to parks and whatnot. Getting maybe some counseling if you need it. Um, do what you need to do to seize the moment because it's divinely appointed. Okay, that's all I have for now. And um, while I actually ended up sharing more than I planned. Oof. <laughs> okay, well, maybe it was spirit-led. I um, hope that it helps somebody out there because, oh, I don't like being seen that way. But 
you know, we're all human. We have our highs and lows. And um, I hope that sharing this low point in my life um, has helped bring some healing for you as it has definitely done for me. I did a lot of healing work during this time. And hopefully that's going to help me with the North Node now going into my 11th house, which I will, God willing, talk about a year and a half from now. And um, hopefully I'm going to show up in my friendships and my social life and with soulmates a lot better because I have done all of that, that healing work. And like I said, if you guys want to hear more about that Saturn in the 10th house transit, I'm coming out of it in a couple weeks and I will share with that with you then. Make sure that you are subscribed if you want to be in the loop for those kind of updates. Till next time, be blessed.